Hello, let's do a status update video. You can see I got over 500 subscribers and you can see that I've changed the channel name. I am super happy with the Retro Anachronist. Yeah, Retro Anachronist that I came up with. Um, it kind of sounds like anarchist, but it's not anarchist and anachronist is so fitting because anytime you hook an LCD monitor to a retro computer, you've become an anachronist. So I am the retro anachronist and I definitely specialize in anachronistic uh, retro computer upgrades. So uh, I think most people do nowadays. There are still a few that do, you know, perfectly period correct. Um, Usagi, he's definitely uh, period correct only, but uh, I am an anachronist and I love it. So, so I got myself a reproduction tank mouse from Sordan.ie. It's USB, but it came with an adapter to use it on the Amiga. So nice plastic. Um, what I think is great is that it's going to be much better than the one that I had. See, previously I had been using this adapter. When I bought this adapter, I bought it on eBay. It was in this nice metal case. I was inside of it recently to look at look at it, and make sure it was built right and everything. It's still working. It uses a uh, pick chip, and uh, it said that it was USB, so I bought it and I plugged in a USB mouse and it didn't work. Turns out it's it, uh, it needs the kind of mouse that's USB and PS2 backwards compatible. So I went to the local retro computer store, REPC, and bought this very old Microsoft mouse. And it worked great with my Amiga 500. Um, so it, uh, it still works. In fact, I, I, um, in my troubleshooting, this board does not work with the mouse. My black board does not work with the keyboard, but I was able to confirm that my mouse adapter was still working. <laughs> so these boards are so much different than each other, even though I built them from the same parts. Anyways, so let's let's pop open this tank mouse and check her out. I'm guessing the adapter's in here. Oh yeah, I have buried inside. That's kind of cool. So goes into there, and uh, yeah, take a couple of triple A's, and it will be up and running. I don't have triple A's handy, so we're not going to use this right now. Um, we're not going to use the mouse at all right now, but I'll plug we'll plug my stubborn. Well, I'll plug this ugly one in. The problem I had with this was it was already running into the wall. You see how it's kind of crooked here? It's because it's slamming into the wall. I was having a heck of a time finding, having a heck of a time finding the correct pinout of uh, RCA jacks for the back of this motherboard. So when I ordered the mouse from Sordan.ie, um, I went and ordered a, two sets of these. Well, that stupid site kept deleting everything in my cart every time, constantly. I think it did it like five times to me. So the last time I filled my cart, I forgot to change quantity to two. So I only got one of these. Came out of Ireland, so getting another set, I'll have to find something else I want on Sorton before I order more from them. But it's really annoying that their website has that glitch. Anyways, this was supposed to be a short, a short update video, so... It's a little light. Maybe, maybe if I can find some heavy batteries to put in there, it'll be good. But, yeah, it's a little lighter than I'd like. So... But hey, that'll that'll look the part with the uh, the Amiga. So next up, this board I have it kind of working. Um, you may have seen me post an update after in my last video um, in the comments. But let's see. I'll turn it on. So we'll get a screen come up, gray, gray, white, and after it gets done scanning a non non-existent floppy. Uh, we will shortly get the workbench screen. How cool is that? So let me plug in a floppy because boy howdy, it really does boot all the way up. Let me plug in my keyboard too. I have a keyboard. So um, I followed Jan Beta's uh, latest, or, you know, recent video, not latest, but he did a recent video on using A500 keyboards with uh, with uh, A2000s and such. So I rewired the uh, Checkmate pinout to work with my a2000. Uh, I cut off the end because this is a uh, like an 8 pin, 2, 4, 6, 7 pin. Yeah, this is a 7 pin. And this is just a basic 5 pin. So I cut off the end of the cable, spliced in a 5 pin, wired it appropriately there. So this is an adapter cable. So I did do the, uh, I removed the uh, transistor in here so that Control Amiga Amiga does reset into A2000. 
Um, so we'll set that aside. Let's turn it on. Flash floppy. I want it on disk image zero. There we go. And it's reading the disk. See, it boots right up. So there we are. That's the Amiga test kit. So as you can see, the mouse on the screen. Are we seeing the screen okay? Yeah, yeah. The mouse on the screen is not moving at all. Um, but um, let's see, F1 for memory. The keyboard does. So yeah, keyboard works fine. I'm um, seeing all one meg of memory, and I've done tests, and it's all happy. Amiga test kit is the floppy version of the diagram. No, that's audio. We don't have audio right now. Let's try F6. Um, F1. Hey, how beautiful is that? Yep. Pixel checkboard. Anyways, F3. There's a different checkboard. So yeah, everything it, everything's pretty happy. It boots right up. Let's uh, let's go to disk image one, and. Uh, Control Amiga Amiga. So there, there we go. This boots up so fast and happily. There it is. It's asking for the di the. Oh, maybe that's not it. Okay, let's try this too. I have a GoTech with an actual screen on it, so I can tell what image I've just put in there. You don't like disc two either? I know disc one is the one you want. Let's just power cycle you. I think it's disc one. Unless disk one is the um, ROM 3.1, it could be. Yeah. All right. So, go three. I'll just keep going up until it takes one of these. There it goes. Yep. Now it's booting. Oh yeah. So here we are. Workbench 1.3. It boots right up, and uh, it's kind of nostalgic running. Uh, 1.3, yeah, 1.3.3. So, yep, yeah, can't find a battery backed up clock because I haven't installed it yet because I don't know what chip to get. Um, and honestly, that's like the last thing I need to install on this thing before I can get this thing to work right. Looks like it's working great, doesn't it? I mean, it's like I gotta figure out why my mouse isn't working. So, yeah, we're in here. Here's the mouse cursor, and I get nothing still. So, and like I said, I know that this, this works because if I plug it into the blackboard, I can move the mouse, but I can't move, I can't use keyboard. So, uh, and I, I can only do that in diagram because diagram is the only thing that's working on the blackboard still. So, and at, even that, that's just barely working and crashes a lot. So anyways, here we are. I can actually do, um, hold down Amiga and move the mouse. See, yay. Yeah. That's so dumb, but you know, at least you got something to move the mouse, but it, uh, it's dumb because it's annoying that I have to do that. Anyways, let's uh, put this back to disk image one. That should show me workbench 3.1 or something. No, I don't know. I think that's 3.1. So let's pop out this kickstart. So now we'll turn it on. Watch the screen when I turn this on. So I'll fast forward this, but there's one green flash. See, this thing is blinking away over here, so that means something. One green flash, two green flashes. This is telling me there's a chip RAM problem, but there isn't. Three green flashes. At five, after the fifth one, it will boot, which is strange. Four green flashes, and it's booting. Okay, so either I miscounted or it booted after four this time. Four or five, and then it boots up. Makes no sense. Shouldn't work like that. But look at her go. This is a 314. So I thought 314 wasn't working because I wouldn't have thought to. Oh, library, library disk. So I insert disk two. I think that's what it wants. Nope. Um, three. Yeah, there we go. Nope, nope. Anyways, it generally boots. It's 3.1 is supposed to be installed on a hard drive, in my opinion, and I'm pretty sure it's just how it's supposed to work. So, 1.3 is great off a of floppy, 3.1 is great off a of hard drive. They can both do the opposite, but it's not great. Anyways, so this board seems to be working, aside from I still don't have a bloody mouse. Mouse is all lit up, I know it works. I can plug it straight, I can unplug the USB here, plug it into my laptop, works fine, and I know the adapter is okay. 
So, um, I just, you know, I just need to, I think, it, I think the mouse goes through this, this chip here. So, um, I need to tone it out. Um, Chris Edwards sent me a bunch of, uh, information on troubleshooting this board. In fact, if I can get this to boot up. Yeah, we'll do that in the background. Well, you might have noticed my Amiga 800 over here. Um, let's see that a little bit better. Yeah, I picked this up uh, from my local retro computer club. Um, if I press these two buttons on the back, uh, it's a little off topic, but you know, it doesn't take any time. Turn it on. It works. Whoops. Ah, oh, I gotta get a new, new hinge on this. So yeah, it's kind of, there it is, ready. You know, and the keyboard's fine. You know. Run, run, yay. And then I hit the reset button. Sweet, yep. So yeah, I'm happy with this. Um, got it for, you know, Belt market price a little bit below especially when you factor and I didn't have to pay any shipping um, so this will get featured shortly but you know on this channel but not right now um, yeah so this is a program called sprint layout so what's cool on this is if I click on one of the kickstart pins here boom it lights up all the traces and where it goes so I can follow it around and tone it out and I, I've done that I toned out the Tone the heck out of everything. I actually did it on the blackboard um, because I was doing it from above and making sure that the sockets were actually making good contact with all the chips. And they were. So uh, I don't know what its excuse is. The green board doesn't have sockets except for a couple of the logics. But uh, yeah, all my sockets are fine. I bought them from, you know, Mauser. They're not, you know, Chinesium sockets. They're good dual swipe sockets. So anyways, um, that, that allowed me to do some troubleshooting. Um, one thing that I found, oh, and you're probably wondering, why is the green board working? If you didn't see my update, I stuck RP503 in backwards. I wish I'd stuck a bunch of them in backwards because that would solve all kinds of problems, but that was the only one that was in backwards. Just a su stupid mistake. All of them have the dot facing one way. That one has the dot facing the other way. Or, you know, all of them, the dots are facing this way. And this is the one that's facing that way. So that's probably how I got it backwards. But anyways, went through, double-checked all the missing spots are supposed to be missing components. All the spots that are supposed to be missing components are missing components. Both boards. I only got RP503 backwards on this one. I've been meaning to do an update on the power supplies. In fact, I've shot a bunch of footage for it, but uh, I haven't done it yet. So let me just give you a short summary. I've been 3D printing, this is one contraption I came up with, a new power supply for this. Because you know, power supplies for these are like a hundred bucks on eBay, and that's not too bad. But uh, why buy an old power supply when I can just take an ATX and make that work? So there we go. This was an early rough draft. Um, I made it too wide, so I went back into there and just made it narrower down here to fit in the case. But it was missing a bunch of things. Um, let's see, uh, one of my more late, latest revisions. I actually bust, so I put in these cool slits, and then I accidentally busted out one. My printer's not quite printing properly ever since I changed the, uh, the nozzle. I went to a Sprite direct drive, and that doesn't print correctly, so I guess I've got to spend a week tuning the thing again. Which is annoying. Anyways, awesome toggle switch. I picked this up at a hardware store, uh, you know, an electronic supply store. Fits in here perfectly. Let's see. Zero is down, so I'll go ahead and stick this in now. And uh, fits perfectly. I drew this up in CAD and got it so perfect this time. Uh, a little bit of trouble with, you know, my nozzle. But this, th even though the print's a little weak, it's, it's going to be perfectly usable. So... Um, got more parts over here. As you can see, there's where the power supply is going to come out. Let me make sure this is on camera. Oh, you loosen. There we go. We'll just make sure we're on camera. So, 
power supply it's going to be just like that in the same place and it's also flush so if i've got this off a little bit it's not going to interfere with the back of the case at all these screw holes line up uh, just basic screws to hold that in um let's see i've got fan grills around here somewhere oh there it is okay so let me grab the fan oh another uh awesome little knock to a fan and a grill to go with it so that'll look just like the original one it's the same location up and down and everything and then you see the screw holes where it screws into the case i've got those they're actually too darn high on this because i guess i don't know maybe i should have made this a little bit taller to let those be in there but anyways for the height i was going with anyways once those are in there um i've also got these screw holes at the top and all of these screw holes are meant to have the uh, these little um, heat zerks put into them. So they're threaded little things. You heat up with a soldering iron and they melt into the hole in the plastic. And uh, then you have something nice to screw into. So anyways, once I've got that, this goes on top. See, I found a nice Amiga logo to put in the top of the power supply. I think it looks awesome. What do you think? Um, yeah, you can almost see where it tried to print the TM at the end of the Amiga logo. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I've got spot for uh, warning labels. I can still put warning labels here, and I've still got a spot here for the, you know, I, I can recreate those or whatever. Obviously, the colors will be different, but yeah. Oh, the, the power supply board that's going to go in here, you see there's standoffs in there. Those are going to have the heat zerks put in them as well. And the board out of my previous draft so this is just an ATX power supply board and uh, I've got the holes lined up with the holes in the PCB so I can screw down this ATX power supply board it'll clear the fan and I'll, I'm gonna wire the toggle switch just to the uh, the green and black that the uh, ATX turn on signal is so when it's plugged in it's always gonna be in like standby and then this is just soft trigger of the power supply and uh this little notch here is just like that notch for all the power wires to come out of they fit nicely and the, the lid will keep them down i don't need a black grommet because this is plastic it's not going to short out against it i'm not going to get abraded by it um this is a 115 240 volt switch or 220 whatever it is anyways i'm just going to bypass this um it's always going to be the same voltage for me and um yeah, so I've got, see it's got the two holes here to screw it down in the back. And I've got these two holes right here. So they're in the same place. My nice venting to let the air come in and over the heat sink on the power supply to keep it cool and let air through the case. Um, this is actually a pretty easy reprint. So once I get my printer recalibrated, I'll print this again. And uh, then the tines won't be so thin or delicate. I made it two millimeters thick. My first draft at this, yeah, here it is. I made it five millimeters thick and it made it a lot of work to try and screw the fan in. So I was just like, you know, two millimeters is plenty. Um, so actually two millimeters is plenty because I found out that one millimeter is not. <laughs> so I tried to print it one millimeter and it might as well have been paper. It just kind of fell apart every time I touched it. it it cracked so two millimeters is just barely enough so that's why i printed it two millimeter thick might still be a little bit thin i did use pla you know you could use stronger filaments like uh, abs or asa i don't really get along well with petg and i don't think petg is much stronger because i've printed things in petg that just shattered just as much as pla ever does so so much for that idea Still need to figure out why my mouse doesn't work on this one. Oh, yeah, and I need to figure out why it flashes green five times before finally posting. I have, um, it's in a safe place somewhere, but I have the 8375 um, Very Fat Agnes. And that's already here, but I don't have the adapter board to go here. So this will have two megs of chip RAM. And in theory, that adapter has the two megs on it, so I shouldn't need any of this RAM anymore. So I can take my known good RAM out of this and put it into my blackboard permanently rather than swapping it back and forth. I've got some RAM in the blackboard that I think is good, but I know this RAM is good.
let's see. Yeah, yeah, that's about where we're at right now. Thanks for watching, and I'm sorry I haven't posted more updates. I just come in here and I sit here with my meter going beep, 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 beep for hours on end, and I haven't actually busted out the scope to look at things, which is what I need to do to troubleshoot the mouse. So maybe I'll shoot some footage of me doing that. Uh, yeah, I hate troubleshooting. I, you know, it's so rewarding in the end when you figure it out, but I'd much rather just work. You know, it's it's new. It should just work. But I'm so much closer, and that makes me pretty happy. Go ahead and subscribe. Thanks for uh, watching this video, and uh, let me know uh, if you got any other suggestions. I got a lot of good tips. Um, so someday I will have both of these boards working properly. They will not beat me.